uh, August 6, 1945, I was only 13 years old. After having to uh, have a little argument with my mother, who was always telling me, come home right away from school, uh, do this, do that. So I was a little irritated. I said, Mom, you tell me the same thing every day. I already know it. So the fresh uh, child that I was, I slammed the door and I went out. How little I knew that I'll never see her again. Uh, soldiers were killed in Pacific. Soldiers were still fighting in Pacific and shortage of manpower. Thus, we, the students, we had to go to the uh, defense factory to support the uh, um, war effort. So that was my reason of being in the factory that day. We go, we gather together outside, we do our exercise, and uh, uh, we do, uh, we listen to the uh, people uh, who want to tell us what to do for that day. I'm sure you have seen it on TV. Uh, but anyways, that's what we are doing. And as I was listening to the speaker, I looked up, not even one cloud in the sky, not even one. Just as blue as it can be. There was exception of one airplane, which was B-29. I was able to recognize the sound. It goes like a mmm, mmm, mmm. All of us, we learn to identify different um, enemy planes. Enemy means Americans at that time. Uh, however, I looked up and I was saying to the, some of the girls, it's insignificant. Don't worry about it. It's only one plane and we have seen that before. And uh, they just come, just one plane to take our pictures down below. So let's not worry about it. It's as I have said that, Sunday we, I saw flash. It's just like a fireball. Like you see the bright sunset in a hot day. I looked and suddenly we are trained to do, we push our eyes in, ears in, open your mouth, fall down on the ground in case of the uh, uh, ray, uh, raid. So we did that, and I was on the ground, we all were, and suddenly everything stopped falling. After a few minutes, everything became calm. I looked up, and the rain. I did not know about the black rain at the time. I read about it later. So what happened was, in my own mind, I said to myself, that might be gasoline. They're going to spray us and they're going to burn us later. So I'm going like this, no smell of gasoline. In the meantime, we looked, fire is coming from the back. Fire is coming from left, right. Only thing we could do was to escape to the uh, space where there was no fire. So if you see fire on the right, you go to left. You see the fire on the left, you go to right. You see on the back, you go forward. That's the only thing we could do. We ended up, by that time was not too many people left actually, but I ended up being on a mountain. It's called Koi, K-O-I, mountain in the other side of uh, uh, Hiroshima. As I went up there, uh, night came, this was 8.15 a.m., but at night time, we were up there and uh, uh, some of the teachers who survived said, nobody can go home unless your parents will come to get you. 
Well, you know, of course, my people are dead, so they couldn't come. Next day, my teacher said, well, you mind to go home. So um, I tried to go home. That was a problem. Going home was a problem. Because Hiroshima is uh, surrounded by the mountain. There are seven rivers flow through Hiroshima. That means one has to go over the bridge after bridge after bridge in order to get home to where I lived. It was, I was in Hiroshima, but I was on the other side. So you go to one bridge, it's down because it burnt all night. You go to next bridge, it's burnt down. So you keep on running from one bridge to the other to the other. And one particular bridge, I was there last year, and they named the bridge Heiwa Bashi, which means peace, a bridge of peace. When I was there, at that time it was called Ayoi Bashi. However, going over this bridge, you look, Japanese soldiers still sitting on a uh, horse, mounted, dead. At that time in Hiroshima, we had a cavalry. So we had uh, many soldiers who rode uh, horses. So anyways, I saw that man, I mean soldier was dead. Then I go a little ways and uh, everyone is running around with uh, uh, hands like this said, Gakusei san mizo kudasai, which means a student, please give me water. And here, their hands are hanging. I'm sorry, yeah, hands are hanging like uh, surgical, surgical uh, gloves. What happened was from the burn that the skin had fallen off. So they somehow one can get very accustomed to seeing the, uh, this kind of scene. So I said, no, I said, you can't have water. When you are burned, you can't have water. So it kept on going. And the mothers will come and said, Gakusei san means a student. Which school did you go to? You no, know, my daughter was in such a such a school and she's looking for her. So anyways, I finally came to the last bridge I could uh, be almost home. However, the bridge was down there too. Only bridge I could go across was railroad bridge. I don't know if uh, any of you ever walked across the railroad bridge on Hudson River. It's not fun because you see the water way down below and you have this much space one has to balance yourself to go over. On top of, top, of the all, top of it all, all dead people down there. It's uh, because I guess it got so hot, everybody had to jump into water and drown. How, so finally I got home, the, hoping I'll find the house, but the house was no longer there burned to the ground. So I was just standing there. I didn't know what to do. So I went every day to look for my mother, whom I found in, under debris, uh, burned. But I was able to identify her because uh, uh, when the uh, uh, building came down, she must went like this. So I was able to find the uh, uh, her obi or sash and uh, her uh, um, pouch. I knew that was hers, so I knew that was her uh, remain. Well, but in the meantime, we are all living in a cave, best that we can. So, uh, so this is my story, and you can't take anything for granted because that can be taken away one in one day. So. I, uh, I am very, very happy that I was able to come here to uh, share my story. And thank you very much for listening. I'm sure it was not such a pleasant uh, subject, but uh, thank you. Thank you.